To make a successful medicine, you can need hundreds of these. The right combination, lives are saved, and money is made. A little tweak can change the effects. Some people believe the key to finding new cures could be in unlocking existing drugs. There's about 30,000 drugs that have been tested on human beings. And the good thing about these drugs is, first of all, that they are very active. And they also have secondary effects. So one drug could be used, say, uh, to treat uh, Alzheimer's, for example. But that drug may also be an antibiotic. Dr. Fareed Khan runs PharmaCure, a business connected to the University of Manchester in England. Using compounds from an old drug used to treat Parkinson's disease, the company claims to have found a treatment that could potentially stop Alzheimer's. You can actually patent these and make second uses of these drugs. And the other advantage of this is actually that you can fast track these compounds or these drugs into clinical trials because they've been pre-tested. But there are obstacles. If the original drug isn't commercially successful, pharmaceutical companies can shelve the compounds to cut their losses. Making drugs is an expensive business. You see a handful of drugs making uh, upwards of five billion sales, but still that needs to offset all the costs that are happening there. To actually develop these drugs, it costs billions of dollars per drug to actually take it from the clinic all the way to, uh, all the, way to the market, at least seven, eight years worth of, uh, uh, worth of development time required. So pharma companies often focus their funds on the next blockbuster. But this isn't the first time a company has cashed in on an old drug. Pfizer made nearly $2 billion last year from Viagra, originally created for angina. Recently, AstraZeneca made 22 failed drugs available to academics. And Roche is working with the Broad Institute on repurposing their abandoned compounds. As more drugs have lost patents, company margins have dragged down. Reusing the chemicals might be one of the ways to help both patients and an ailing industry. Tom Gibson, Bloomberg.